Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this lovely little snail. This is from Johanna Basford's Flourish and um, we're going to be using Stead Stedler Ergosoft pencils. So I'm just going to start off with the main part of the snail. I'm going to use number eight. Now I'm going to do him grey. Now I usually do snail um, snails and slugs and things in a grey colour and it's a bit of a stereotype and maybe a bit dull but because of all these lovely bright flowers that he's got we can brighten him up with that. So what I'm doing with this little um, pattern on the bottom of him is uh, doing a darker part here and then lightening it up towards the top. There's two reasons for this. Firstly it makes it look a little bit more interesting but also I think it would be a bit darker especially on these pieces towards the ground where he is and then there'll be more light nearer the top. I'm sorry about the, the um, colour of this video, I just noticed it's really blue. Um, I just don't know what to do with the light in this room at the moment. It is so um, dark outside. I've got all the lights on, I've got a lamp on. Now my video is compensating for the bright light by dimming the picture, unfortunately. And uh, it's making it look rather blue. Um, going for number 80 now. But if I turn all the light, if I turn my lamp off then you get a huge hand shadow across everything which uh, from the main light and if I turn the main light off it's even darker so uh, it's really uh, really hard to know quite what to do. I need to have a fiddle with lamps and lights and see what I can do to make it better because as the winter comes in and it's gonna have less um, light days. Normally I record with no lights on at all but uh, it's just too dark today. It's raining. We've got storm. What's it called? Storm Barbara. So what I'm doing with this bit is I'm going darker here in between these pieces and then lightening up towards the main part of the um, body, the sort of top of the body. Now there will be some shadow under here but we'll deal with that in a minute. I'm going to actually do that in a brown colour. Now the face, never sure whether to pop on an eye, but then of course these are the eyes of the snail, not the face. So he just looks a bit bare, I don't know, but we'll leave him as he is. I can do a bit darker at the bottom of these um, eyes. If you'll let me, I think I'll go in with a darker colour in a minute. So. And I'm going to put a bit of darker grey there and lighten it as we go up. There we go. There he is. Now, for this shadow part, I'm going to use number 77. So underneath the shell here, just a really small, sort of, almost just giving an idea of shadow. I don't want it to look like there's lots of brown, just a little bit and maybe a bit just tucked under there and that bottom part there which we tried to do before. There we go. Now the shell. Now I'm thinking we need bases for these pretty flowers so I'm going to go with this number 73, this sort of coppery brown colour because I think the, um, the leaves and flowers will show up well. Now I'm going to go in with quite a light covering. I'm just going, you see I'm using a round and round motion just to gently apply an even coating of the colour. I haven't really thought about um, how I'm going to sort of shade it yet. Do we want shadows under the plant, under the flowers and leaves probably? Do we want to make it a bit darker around the outside to give it a more three dimensional shape? Probably. But I'm just going to get oh, that's a, a, some colour down because I want to try and it makes it easier for me to identify where is the, where's plant and where's shell and then we can worry about all the textures and colours afterwards. So now we're getting into this intricate part in the middle. I'm thinking that shell there and that and that. Uh, I think that is. Those are all leaves. These are all leaves. And um, what's going on here? We've got petals. That's a petal. Those are all petals. I think we're there. 
you may not agree when you do it. You can see it's quite unevenly coloured here, I hope you can see. And so I'm going to take, I want it to be a bit darker around the whole outside. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to fade it more in towards the middle. And I'm hoping that will give it a more spherical feel. But I'm also taking advantage of doing this extra layer over all of it. But I'm going a lighter touch towards the middle so we get more of a defined sort of outside edge. Now I'm not seeing a huge contrast, but I'm just going to work with it and do a little bit over there just to blend it in. And now I'm going to use this darker brown. So I'm going to use my number 76 and I'm going to do the same thing again but with a lighter touch just around the very edge of the shell. There we go. And then thinking about shadow under the flowers and things, I'm going to use this one as well. Now I tend to be quite careful when I'm using brown because it can sometimes make things look a bit dirty. I've just noticed a bit that I've missed. You may have spotted it, you might be shouting at the screen, you missed that bit in there. Right, so I'm going to do underneath the bottom of each flower where there might be some shadow but I'm not going to do around the whole edge and then I'll see how it looks and whether I feel like I do need to go the whole edge now what's it going on in there that's petal that I think that's a bit as well I think that needs to be brown in there so underneath and you see I'm just doing a little gentle layer enough to stand out hopefully you can see Under here and under here and a bit in there, a bit under there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You could go around the top edges and sides as well, but I'm happy with it just um, being like that. Now, I want to do the flowers different colours, and I'm going to, so therefore to make it more add some consistency, I'm going to do all the leaves the same colour. I'm going to leave those till last. Um, because then I will be able to decide what I think looks best with regards to the leaf colour. So I'm going to do number six. This is the dark purple, it looks blue, but believe me it's the purple. And start with this really big flower. And I'm going to go in with quite a lot of pressure towards the centre. And then gently release it towards the edge. And do the same thing with every petal on this lovely flower. And hopefully it will give it more three-dimensional look as if this part of the petal is in more shade so it's tipped in a bit. It may not work on such a little flower but we'll give, we'll give it a go anyway. So I really want to emphasise it's darker on this there we go, that's the purple. And now I'm going to do a pink, this sort of purpley pink colour, number 61. Gosh, it's hard to see. And I'm not going to put it right next to, or am I? Maybe yes, I will. Now, for this tiny flower, I'm not going to worry about technique, I'm just going to colour it in a nice layer of pink. There we go. And I'm going to use this pink, um, which is number 25, and I'm going to do this flower up here. This one is really sharp, I'm going to have to go really gently, so it's going to snap. Now I'm looking at the flower centres and thinking I'm going to do those in a consistent way as well, so that it brings it all together. There we go. Now an orange I think we need. 
number 24. Mm. I think this one, orange and purple, are nice together. This is a bigger flower, so I'm going to try and put a bit of texture into this one. So a bit heavier towards the centre, lighter towards the edge. And this one. There's that one, and I think we need a red, definitely. Don't worry, we'll go with some blue in a minute as well. Oh, I can't get the red out of the tin. Number 29. I'm going to put the red over here. No, here. This is quite a small flower, so again, I'm not going to worry about shade. I'm just going to put an even pressure on every petal. Get that red colour in there. Right, I am now going to turn to some blues. First of all, I am going to use this one, number 37, and I'm going to do this one here. This is nice and sharp. I find the sharper the pencil, the easier it is to get a dark layer of colour down. I don't notice that I think it's because it can really push the colour into the paper but it means if you want a gentle colour you have to be really careful there we go and I'm going to go for a darker blue as well so I'm going to use number three and I think we'll put it here again it's quite small which is going to put an even of that one across. Now, although we've got lots of pinks already, I'm going to use number 20. And I'm going to put it down here. Now you might, I'm, I'm choosing to try and keep very similar colours separated by a little bit. We've got pinks here. What should we do? I think we'll go for a lighter orange. I'm avoiding yellow because I'm going to do yellow middles. Number 42. So we've got an orange here. So if we put one here or here, they're going to be right next to each other. But unfortunately, we've got nowhere else to go with our orange. So I'm going to pop it here. And it's quite a different shade. It's quite yellowy. And that last flower I've decided I'm going to do in this light blue number 30. Now this one's slightly bigger so I can do a darker colour there and then lighter towards the tip for this one. There we go. Okay, now flower centres yellow. I'm going to use this orangey yellow, number 11. I rather like the intensity of it. And I think it will look good with the, this brownie colour that we've got behind for the shell. Oh, snap. I don't know if you hear it. Very loud. That's pressing too hard. Okay. There we go, and now we've got green. And what I'm going to do is use the same green for the leaves here and the leaves on the outside. And I chose a number five. Now, I didn't want the olive greens. I wanted something that would be quite bold. But I didn't want the really dark bluey green. That's so why I chose this one. I'm going to do these all just with an even pressure because they're so small. I'm not worried about shading. And hopefully it will just bring it all together. I really needed some green, I felt, in this picture. And there we go. And I'm going to do these as well. Now these are slightly bigger, so I am going to add another colour. 
So I'm going to do it darker here and then gen a more gentle towards the end. The same here. And although I've covered the whole flower in colour, I'm going to go over it in another colour. I'm going to go back over those bits that I want really dark, but make sure they there's not a harsh line. So that's why I do that sort of action just to blend it in. And I'm going to finish with this colour, which is number 50 and just finish up the tips of the leaves and blend it through just to add a little bit of interest on those slightly bigger ones and there I think he's finished now I still feel like I want to draw some eyes and a mouth on him but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to leave him like that let's push him a little bit more central for you to see there he is, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that one thank you very much for watching and happy colouring